What is up, guys? Welcome back to The Sound Check. You are here with your boys, Blake and TK, and we're back with some more reaction videos for you here on a sunny Monday in Sydney. Blakey, what do we got today, my dude? Exciting one. I'm looking forward to some more BTS content, and that's what we got. We have Why the Music Industry is Terrified of BTS. Cool name for a video. I'm um, yeah. super interested Gnarly to see shit. what this one is, so let's get into it, man. Let's do it, doggy. On April 3rd, Jimin of BTS became the first South Korean soloist to debut at number one on the world's biggest music chart, the Billboard Hot 100. His song Like Crazy became the seventh song ever by a Korean act to reach number one. The other six songs are BTS's songs. So all of the Korean songs that reach number one are from BTS and BTS members only. Actually, all the songs from Asian artists that debuted at number one are from BTS and BTS members only. And believe it or not, this is extremely scary for the music industry. Since Whoa. BTS entered the Hot 100's top 10 for the first time in 2018, the music industry has done everything in their power to prevent them from getting number one songs. But why does BTS keep succeeding despite literally- That's crazy. Yeah, it's wild, man. That is wild. The tall poppy syndrome is huge. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm interested to see why they're uh, terrified. I think I know why, but I'd, I'd like to see what they have to say about it for sure. Yeah, assuming it's obviously like because they're just killing it. But dude, just quickly, we have this in Australia with like rappers like Cursor and all of that, like just getting pushed down by like the huge media, like Triple J and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because they don't have control over what he does and yep. that's scary to them, man. It's so. wild. Let's do it. Great start already. Really being one of the most sabotaged artists in the industry. And why would all these music entities work together to harm one artist? Isn't this simply mm -hmm. paranoia from BTS fans? The industry's actions say something very clear. BTS cannot be at the top. And they don't try to hide this anymore. Everyone can see the industry's obvious intentions by looking at the times they come up with a weird new rule that prevents BTS from succeeding in their charts. Just look at the latest one. Jim Jimin's song Like Crazy got a number one in its first week and it was predicted to stay in the top 10 for its second week. Jimin was achieving the same debut numbers of Olivia Rodrigo but without the industry support. And this obviously was not the industry's plan. So Billboard decided to change one specific rule that benefits Jimin so him and only him can fall from the charts and the rest of it stays exactly the same. It's still unknown what Billboard did exactly to make the best-selling song of the week go from 100,000 sales to 14,000 sales. Maybe Jesus. Billboard didn't just want Jimin to not be in the top 10. They wanted him to free fall. So why filter 60% of the song's sales so we can fall from the top 10 when you can cut 90% of the song's sales and make him have the biggest fall ever? Maybe they didn't just want to take his accomplishment away. They wanted to send a message. They wanted wow. to show who is really in charge not the fans consuming the music but the industry itself this is not the first time they've done this whenever they want a song to fall on the charts they apply a new rule that applies to one artist and then they forget about this rule for the following weeks until once again an artist they don't want to be at the top is at the top so they apply one specific rule that can help them fall allegedly of course because the only explanation to delete 90% of a song's sales is for Luminate, which tracks these numbers, to track each payment by looking at IP addresses and credit card information. And that's illegal and Billboard would never, of course. So why would the whole industry go out of their ways to prevent one artist from succeeding? BTS's biggest advantage and disadvantage is that they are successful without the industry's support. And the industry has built an environment where you can only win if you accept to play the industry's game. In other words, the industry chooses its winners from the very beginning and sabotages other players who find alternative ways to defeat others at their own game. I would say that the biggest artists who do this are BTS, and it's because of ARMY's power. BTS is not simply a one-hit artist, they are at the core of pop culture and they did this without industry support, not the K-pop industry support, not the Western industry support. 
BTS were able to get to the top of the music industry without the music industry making a profit out of them. That's why BTS are a problem. That's what the industry cannot stand. Just compare Psy's situation with BTS's situation. When Gangnam Style by Psy became globally popular, the music industry was not afraid of a Korean singer becoming popular in the West because everyone assumed it was a one-time thing. But when BTS became globally popular, the story was different. The Western industry was first okay with them being a one-hit artist. They were fine with BTS being the weird phenomenon that people will grow out of after some time. But when they didn't disappear and they actually started defeating Western artists, the music industry got worried. When I first heard something Korean had exploded in America, I got worried. The entertainment industry is usually happy to celebrate international and independent artists and scream diversity as long as one, it's a one-time thing, or two, artists obey the industry's rules and give the industry some profit. The Oscars were fine celebrating. It's absolutely crazy, man. It's li literally because they can't profit off of BTS in the West and they yep. can't control what they put out, when they put it out and all that kind of stuff that yep. they just completely do everything they can to sabotage it. And it's not even like hidden, like it's in plain nah. sight what yep. they're doing. Absolutely mental. It's, it's still <sighs> crazy that in this age where like, you know, everything is digital and everything is online that these labels and stuff still have such a stranglehold on the industry, man. It's wild that, it's wild that labels are still so relevant and such yeah. a crucial part. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a great time when eventually, because it is going to happen eventually, surely. that they're not going to have the stranglehold. Because, I mean, a lot of these labels are still able to function off the money that they made 20, 30, 40 years ago. Just reinvesting it. And th that money is eventually going to die out and yep. they're going to stop being able to make money off these artists. And then in, in turn, finally, their stranglehold's going to go away. But yeah, this well, is... Just quickly, in the last 10 years, right, in just our small scene alone, how mm -hmm. many people, or so how many musicians have you spoken to that are like, I don't want to sign to a label? Yeah. Because all I've heard from my peers is horror stories. Yeah, 100%. It's like it's man. not worth it to even bother doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. And all they have really have left is like mainstream pop to make money off. And yeah. once, you know, people like Olivia Rodrigo or Justin Bieber, yeah. once they're, they, like people like that are refusing to sign with labels, the labels are screwed. They've got no chance. Yeah. Come on in. I think the people want to see that beautiful face. Hmm. Celebrating Bong Joon-ho's movie because even though they don't profit from the movie's success, at least Bong Joon-ho is not an artist releasing multiple successful projects a year. Parasite was a one-time thing then. that indirectly did help his other movies from American production companies. The Emmys were happy giving Squid Games multiple awards because at least the show was being produced by Netflix yep. and the actors were happy to accept offers from the Western industry. In there other words, the Western industry got benefits from the success of a foreign series, so it was fine to celebrate them. Everything Everywhere All at Once was highly celebrated by the industry. By the end of the day, it's an American movie by American directors, American writers, mm. and American production companies. In the end, the movie's success is the American industry's profit. But singers are different because they constantly release music and their success can become constant support from fans. So an artist's success can rely on the fans more than it relies on the industry itself. And that is not something the industry wants. This Such is a why joke. a song like Despacito, which was already the most popular song worldwide before the Justin Bieber feature, was not recognized at all by Billboard or any other entity from the American music industry. They only accepted the song as a global success when Justin Bieber and his American label were involved and in making a profit out of it. This is why man. the Billboard Music Awards were happy to invite Psy to their ceremony, but they never gave Gangnam Style the biggest song of the year on number one. Many factors prevented Psy from achieving this. To start, Psy never left his Korean company to fully sign with an American label, so his music never got proper industry support. Also, at the time, Billboard didn't count YouTube views as streams, making it obvious how the charts didn't reflect what the public was actually listening to. Even to this day, and with many chart adjustments, the Billboard charts are just a reflection of the artists the industry wanted to succeed from the very beginning. Absolutely. Of course, there are exceptions like Gangnam Style, 
Nacional, Old Town Road, and some organic TikTok hits. But how far they go and how far they'll keep being recognized depends on the artist's willingness to shake hands with industry people. And again, they don't care if you're a foreign artist, as long as they get to make a profit out of you. But if you don't comply with them, you will get your moment of fame and then be completely shut down from the music industry. Mm. Here's how they do it. The industry endorses its own artists on streaming platforms like Spotify by applying multiple subtle methods. One way is by putting the artist's desire to succeed at the best spots of curated playlists. The biggest one is the Today's Top Hits playlist, which doesn't actually show Today's Top Hits. That yeah. it's the ugly, colorless Top 50 playlist. Today's Top Hits is what Spotify wants to be the top hits. Mm -hmm. Millions of streams from the general public come from this playlist, so being a part of it, it's a vital part of a song's promotion. Spotify Boy. says that they decide which artists get to be at the top of the playlist or at the cover based on their intuition and ex And the other thing with that, man, is that like these Spotify playlists that they call Spotify editorial playlists, they are like marketed as Spotify's team of editorial people are sitting down, listening to everything and then selecting the songs that they think are the best to be on there which is a complete lie like it's not true at all they the same way that radio stations used to work with labels that's what spotify are doing so Literally, they're bought they're tied in with labels exactly <laughs> and so if you don't if you don't believe that you're yeah you're head in the clouds a hundred percent in the sand a hundred percent so they're right like this isn't today's top hits this is not what the most people are listening to today no. these are the hits from the labels that spotify have a relationship with and want to keep on their side like yep. it's mental yeah. dude expertise in music trends but many find these arbitrary decisions suspicious it's not what you know it's who spotify you know yeah. loves giving this special treatment to certain artists from certain labels. To think that artists from certain powerful labels are paying their way to the cover of these playlists may not be a crazy thing to think. Spotify also takes advantage of the automatic autoplay feature. When you stop listening to an album you like, they will immediately play you a song they want you to stream. More recently, Spotify updated their homepage to a TikTok-like feed that lets you scroll down endlessly with songs and music videos being automatically played. So while some artists get millions of streams added because of passive streams from curated playlists and the accidental streams from the autoplay feature, BTS get millions of streams deleted because fandom behavior of willingly listening to a song every day is considered bot behavior. It's so if ridiculous. you compare BTS's unfiltered streams with their filter streams, you will find out that they are the ones with the highest rate of filter streams. Their streams get deleted more than any other artist. There are even days when their streams are cut in half. But Spotify is not the only platform doing this. Some of BTS's biggest waves of new fans came from YouTube. Their music videos get so many views that BTS started breaking. What are you sussing, my dude? So on Spotify, they have like at the bottom of an artist's page, what rank they are in the world mm. in terms of listens. Yeah, what are they? BTS apparently are the 123rd most streamed artist in the world. Complete lie, dude. They would eclipse everyone on that list's numbers, but because of this, they're 123rd in the world. It's just mental. Ridiculous. Every YouTube record imaginable, time and time again. So every time BTS broke a record, YouTube changed their algorithm to find ways to delete what they say are inorganic views. But it's pretty clear that their algorithms never worked properly. That's why they keep changing it every time BTS gets a new record. <laughs> so just to talk about the latest YouTube algorithm change, I'm going to talk about the most successful music videos from a Korean act so far this year. According to YouTube, it's this video. But according to the massive wave of new BTS fans you can find on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube itself, it's on the street by J Hope of BTS featuring J Cole and like crazy. Oh, that's sick. By I didn't even know he had a song with but J Cole. Both of these ah. videos get millions of views deleted every day. Song it's common for Drake YouTube to do this in the first mm -hmm. 24 hours with every music video, since it's the day they get the most views. As days pass, fans stop mass streaming and YouTube. I'll just say as well, like since we've started reacting to BTS content and we're mm. watching a fair bit of BTS content. 
I don't think we get suggested BTS videos in our home feed. Like no, dude, pops. I'm watching YouTube so much, and yeah. I can safely say I do not get suggested BTS content. There you go. YouTube stops deleting views, but this is BTS, so YouTube is still deleting their music videos. That's such a crazy realization! Yeah. Oh my god. Released. You may still think that YouTube is just deleting fake views, but it's simply impossible for a random Jimin interview to get more views in its first hours than an official and anticipated Jimin music video. It's not crazy to believe that YouTube disproportionately deletes views on BTS's music videos specifically. Let's be logical for a second. These K-pop acts are not bigger than BTS, and that's okay. But it's not okay for BTS to get their views deleted every hour while these other microscopical songs get views added because people are forced to stream their music no way, videos it's wrong. as YouTube yeah. ads. It's On the other wrong, hand, dude. because of these two videos, BTS recently received one of its biggest waves of new fans, probably the biggest since 2021. Yet YouTube wants us to believe that these are the real numbers. Global takeover group. BTS in the studio. There they are. Probably the most fraudulent practice in the music industry is giving radio importance. At least with streaming platforms, there is this sense of autonomy. Streaming platforms may choose the artists they want to be at the top. They may recommend you their songs and music videos time and time again. They may even steal a stream from you because of their autoplay features and paid ads. But at least there are ways to fight this. Armies may not get BTS ads and recommend. Just going to slow things down for one second. It's just so frustrating that what stands between the artist and the listener are just things that don't have a place in music. Yeah. 100% man, it's a bunch of people in boardrooms yep. tweaking algorithms and they are paranoid. terrified. Paranoid because, about their cash. Yeah, and they're terrified because they, they know that nowadays people don't care what the music industry has to say. Nope. They find music for themselves and they become passionate about things completely independently of music marketing. And yep. yeah, it's wild, man. Yep. And I, I'm going to do an experiment after this. I'm going to listen to some BTS on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And like it says, when the autoplay feature kicks in after the album finishes, I would bet money that it will redirect me to Dua Lipa or <laughs> something that they can make money out of. Yep. It's, it's just madness, dude. Yep. And in any other industry in the world, this would be illegal. But the music For industry sure. is the Wild West and they yep. can do whatever they want without being regulated. It's Absolutely. just mental. The music industry is so desperate for regulation. It, yeah, it has to be, dude. Everything so else desperate. is like they have things like protections in place to stop this kind of thing happening. But it's like when you, if you, in Australia, we have a very, very, very strict uh, fair work policies yeah. that are in place yeah. to protect you as, a, as an employ employee. 100%. And you don't get any of that as a musician. No. <laughs> Nothing. No. None of that. And yeah. yeah, these companies are literally just stealing from people. Yeah. 100%. And it's, it's not just BTS. I'm sure that other artists have who refuse to play by the rules of the industry have experienced these same things, and it's sure. just it's mental, dude. I you know I could be treading in dangerous waters here by saying this, but I feel as though someone like Taylor Swift is one of those people because look at her success now, right? Yeah. She's she rejected Spotify initially mm -hmm. she yep. she's she's definitely been about rejecting a lot of these like things that control you and I she's now redoing all of her albums right yeah but look at her success it's on the set it's almost I mean I could be wrong in saying this army please don't come for me but you know Taylor Swift BTS same kind of length of like success right in a sense where like you cannot you, nothing you can do will stop them you can't fight the army. You can't t fight Swifties. Yeah. They're so passionate about, about their, the artists that they back. And mm -hmm. I think that's just a testament to show that like, if it's, if it's, if it's good, if it's, if people love it, it it'll, it'll, it'll fight through and it'll power through and become its own thing. For sure. It'll it's it. just crazy that it's even at a point where they have to fight through it. You know yeah, what I mean? It like, shouldn't be the case. Shouldn't be the case at all. But yeah, I like, I don't know if Swifties and army are on the same level, but they are without a doubt 
probably the two biggest fan bases Surely. in the world. So yeah, yeah for sure, man. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Like anyone who doesn't want to play by their rules, either like because there's not there's not many artists that have things like the Swifties and Army. Yeah, it's like if you even look at like Jay Z who started Tidal and tried to like take on Spotify. Yeah, eventually he had to just fold and yep. put his stuff on Spotify yep. and fall in line like everyone else. Yep. And that, he's one of the biggest rap artists of all time. And even yep. he couldn't defeat the system, yep. man. It's mental. Yeah, absolutely mental. But they can look for the songs and videos themselves. Armies may not get all of their streams content, but at least the industry recognizes about half of them. But what has no solution except wow. to pay is radio. Radio mysteriously chooses certain songs to get played mm -hmm. and stays with those, giving them millions of radio spins and points to music charts that will give them a number one. But here you have Jimmy of BTS, who has no a number one, one song to radio and millions anymore. of radio play requests by Fans, no one that cares about music does. Yeah, exactly. Zero points from radio. And this is not even a crazy foreign song that the American general public may reject. This is a mainstream yet nicely produced pop yep. song in English. But this is just reality. It was not in the industry's plans or in their best interest to make like crazy popular. So when it happened, they once again pretended like BTS doesn't exist and continue sabotaging their songs. Life Goes Song was another radio friendly song by BTS that got a number one on the Hot 100, but they received a total of six spins on US radio. That's zero points for music charts. Dynamite and Butter were number one songs in English by BTS. That Just quickly, I, I love to imagine like um, all the execs in like a boardroom of a massive label sitting down watching this video and they're all just like sweating profusely like, oh God, they're on to <laughs> us. <laughs> They were played on the radio to an extent, but the number of spins were not enough to maintain their number one position. They were only able to stay on the top of the charts because people were streaming and buying their songs. That is the main difference with BTS's songs and the industry songs. If you take the millions of radio spins from the majority of the industry's promoted Look songs, that, they wouldn't only have bigger falls than BTS, million they would simply not be million. in the chart at all. This is how the industry chooses their success stories from the very beginning. Mass radio play makes a song debut look more successful than what it actually is, and therefore it misleads and attracts the general public. If this doesn't work and the general public still rejects the song, the industry doesn't give up. Mass radio play makes an unsuccessful song stay in the charts with minimal sales and streams from real people. While this sure. happens, songs like Jimin's, which literally got a number one and millions the, the most baffling thing that I learned about the music industry, about labels, you know, not like seven, eight years ago was that to get charted, you just have to buy, you just have to purchase the, sh purchase the records. So like if you're a label with all the money in the world and you want your song to be seen in the charts, you just have to just buy copies of the CD or the vinyl yeah, or man. whatever. Yeah. And it also gets like back when CDs were around, it used to get counted based on how many um, like record stores purchased the the record. So not how many actually get sold. Mm. So say JB Hi-Fi orders 100,000 copies and don't sell any, that still counts as 100,000 sales yeah. because the retailer purchased them. They can yeah. then go and return all 100,000 back to the label yeah. and those sales still count, which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. But, you know, in, in nowadays, right, you know, everyone's... Think about it, like everyone has their own merch store. Mm -hmm. So labels, they just set up merch stores and they just sell the vinyl on there. Yeah. And, and they, they just, just buy them all. Buy it all yeah. and it still counts. Yeah. Like, and it's like, cool, we won. Like, yeah. you didn't though. You're yeah. just lying. It's like, you know, that's why there's all these like talk of like bot farms and whatnot. And it's like, well, yeah, it's probably, probably happening. And that's like what they were saying about the radio plays, like a label probably is going to a radio station and being like, we'll give you a hundred grand or whatever amount of money to play this song three times a day, every day on every single one of your stations in every city. Yep. And then, yeah, like these millions of plays accumulate, whether anybody actually likes the song or not is completely irrelevant, yep. which is just it's madness, dude. Well, and also as well, these, the songs that, that are having that kind of push on them, the songs aren't even... The songs are designed, they're built and like 
there's a formula in them mm-hmm. so that like when you hear it enough you've actually it, it you can't not find it catchy the way yeah. it's built you go to any shopping center that song's playing you get in an uber that song is playing and it just eventually gets embedded in your head yep and you haven't you haven't made the decision yourself whether you like the song or not it's just been drilled into your Pushed brain in you. dude it's crazy it's like and it's also like you know think about I'm going to use that Jack Harlow song that came out that was really popular. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was a recycle of another popular song. That's all a, and that's American all is. pop is, dude. Exactly. It's just recycling yep. other songs. So it's getting pushed to you. It's yeah. recycled and it's like, oh yeah, I love this song. It's like, well, yeah, because you've heard it 500 times. Yeah. Man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully. It's crazy, man of people streaming and buying will still not receive any radio spins. Radio doesn't care about how radio friendly the song is. They don't care about the millions of faithful listeners they will get if they play BTS music. They don't care about the most requested songs. The industry's plans are the industry's plans. Yep, just a big advertising scheme, really. <laughs> The reason why many talk about the industry as a whole is because all of these music entities are interconnected one way or another. Of course, they Artists all have to work and their together. labels know that being on the billboard charts gives the illusion that the general public is listening to a song. And to get a number one song on this chart, you need streams, sales, and radio play. So music labels, allegedly, pay for all of these radio play, fraudulent streams, and media play because yeah. they can be an investment yep. for future real sales and streams. This can be an investment for real popularity and real listeners. If all of these investments fail to convince the general public and the label is bold enough, they will continue paying for these tactics to stay on the charts while no real people are streaming or buying the song. These failed industry promoted songs that no one is listening to will then be nominated for <laughs> Grammys with the excuse that they care about quality and not popularity. Dude, every year the Grammy nominations come out and every year the general public goes, what the hell is this? Like, yep. None of this is what should it's the be. Same on the with list. the Arias, man. Yeah. And same with the Arias. Yeah, it's, it's all trash. Madness, dude. It's not what people are actually listening to. Again, it's just crazy. These Grammys will then elevate the artists and the music label's reputation, and then they will get more money invested in them. This money will then be used to buy media play, radio play, streams, and the circle continues. If a massively promoted song or album is successful, the artists may get their investment money back, as well as the obvious Grammys. This will give the artists Maybe. the most <laughs> important factor to make money reputation. Allegedly, music labels pay way more money to streaming platforms for promotion than they receive from streams. The money Absolutely. paid for radio spins can go from thousands of dollars to multi-million dollar settlements. And getting this investment back as sales is not as common because buying music is not a popular enough practice amongst the general public. Musicians rarely make profit from their music. They earn money from advances, merchandise, royalties, licensing fees, and concerts. That's you can why that much number cut one that is down so to important. Just concerts, That's why dude. many will rather yeah. not make any profits now and get a Grammy later. It's like being influencers. Their actual content may not make a lot of profit but the reputation and popularity of yep. their name can get them fashion deals yep. commercials and a time slot in a music list. festival these are only examples of course there are many variables and outcomes sometimes artists invest in radio play and end up making a lot more money from sales or concerts sometimes an artist has a good relationship with the industry for years and then they stop shaking hands with industry people and they receive zero grammy nominations for an extremely popular critically acclaimed album Album. When it comes to BTS, the Western industry's main interest is ratings and social media engagement because that is direct money for the Western industry. BTS's five Grammy nominations are historic for a number of reasons, but their lack of wins show the obvious message the Grammys are trying to send them. Mm. You can't be invited so we have the ratings, yep. but you are not our friends, so you won't win. In the end, the industry has the first and last say. And this doesn't only happen in the Western music industry. You won't believe how much the South Korean music industry tries to sabotage the only artists capable of bringing billions of dollars to their economy. Again, this is because BTS are not yeah, part of not their one elite. Of the big the three major music labels in South Korea control the entertainment industry. They have enough power to blacklist artists from independent labels like BTS and make the media downplay their achievements. There isn't a common 
practice of doing his sales like in American music charts. But what they would do it's is freeze the charts see. and then apologize for a technical error. So <laughs> millions of BTS sales are not counted once again. This is how the different music entities inside oh, each man. music industry are what interconnected. They need one another to function. Sometimes they are one and the same. If you thought Billboard and Rolling Stone were at some point competing for who has the best charts, think about how they are both owned by Banks Media Corporation, which yep. also owns Variety, Deadline, The Hollywood Reporter, and an interest in music business worldwide. So if BTS is still the biggest group in the world, but they don't have a good relationship with the music industry, here you will have, guess who, Billboard. Probably telling the line with a lot of things here, but I'm just going to go out and say it. It's like politics. It's like... It's like politics, man. People in politics, the ones that usually like get the highest up are the ones with the most money. Yeah. Because they've got the most power to control the media and all that to yeah. dictate it to how they need it to be to fit their agenda. Yeah. And they're talking about here in America where all of the media outlets are owned by like one or two companies. It's the same out here, man. All yep. of our media is owned by like two to three massive companies. Yep. And like they'll make it look like they're competing, but they're not. They're, they're not competing and they're not giving different point of views. It's all the same. All the same, baby. Yeah, it's wild, dude. It's great. It's like, again, it's just crazy that they do this stuff in plain sight for everyone to see. And yep. it's great that more people are catching on, man. Cause it's, it's really good. Like we said towards the start, it's not going to be this way forever. It can't be. These, no. these There's going to be a change somewhere. It's yeah. going to collapse and it's just, it's, it's just impossible for yeah. it to stay this way. It's impossible. Rolling Stone, Variety, and The Hollywood Reporter making a profit out of BTS by selling explicit photo shoots yeah. while at the same time writing negative articles undermining their <laughs> success. This person said something interesting. Billboard is nothing but an ad selling business, the literal definition of a billboard. So just on that as well, I think that's a ma massive reason why when we put out the um, John Cook on Jimmy Fallon, mm -hmm. a lot of people said that BTS pretty much told all American media to F off except for Jimmy Fallon. Like they're happy to wow. keep doing interviews with him, but they don't want to do interviews with anybody else. That's and it, so it sick. It just shows why, dude, because they're completely screwing BTS over. Yeah. Why are you surprised the artist Billboard promoted since day one end up succeeding in the Billboard charts? Like I said, there are not many artists that make money from their music, but music sales are still an important factor to get a number one song or album. So they will digitally sell their songs for cents and their albums for only a couple of dollars. This makes a lot of points for charts, but not so much money for the artist. They will also do the classic bundle album sales by selling concert tickets and different kinds yeah. of merch like t-shirts, socks, underwear, cups, lollipops, energy drinks, and even con <laughs> DJ Khaled energy. Oh my God. <laughs> we should actually do a reaction to trying that. But um, <laughs> I just want to say, yeah, just kind of what we were talking about earlier about, you know, just buying sales. It's like, yeah, they'll bundle things in. So it's like, come to my concert and you get the album. You, you don't really want the album, but you're like, no. you know what? I'll pay an extra 20 bucks to get yeah. it so that I just have it. Like, but then a people say they buy it on iTunes or whatever, right? And they listen to 99% of their music on Spotify. Do you really think they're going to even exit Spotify to go listen to the album that they paid for? No. They're just going to listen to it on Spotify. It's, exactly. Yeah. Record sales in this day and age mean absolutely nothing, dude. 100%. Along with a copy of their album, charts will then count these merch <laughs> sales yep. as album sales. However, BTS's main strategy to get their number one albums and songs is to focus on music sales, real sales. BTS has never bundled their albums with any kind of merchandise or concert tickets. Wow. Their biggest sin, which the industry loves to point out, is the fact that they release a maximum of four versions of an album. But these were only special occasions. The norm for BTS is to release two versions of an album, something completely harmless if you compare it to the insane sales tactics by other music labels. 
fans yeah, feeling encouraged to buy two like or four versions kind of, of like the same album will, yeah, because they can't have a unique the photo card items, is nothing so. compared to K-pop singers releasing seven or thirteen versions of the Jesus. same album. BTS's two or four versions of an album don't have the purpose to maximize album sales, or they would be way cheaper. BTS's album versions are intended to actually make money, and their number of versions usually has something to do with the album's concept. If they think one version of an album is enough to capture the album's concept, then they exactly they're like putting creativity into yeah. the reason why they have multiple versions where western labels are just like yeah let's put this crap. get the numbers up yeah put Run this crap out up. no one cares about these guys it's actually care and yeah. put effort into it yeah. they will release only one version if the album's concept works better in two opposite works then they release two versions it's as simple as that Another common practice to maximize sales is to release remixes of a song. All of these remixes, sales, and streams will be combined and help the main song climb in music charts. BTS very occasionally releases multiple remixes of a song, and armies buy these remixes to help BTS stay on the charts, since they receive literally zero points from radio and their streams are cut in half. But while BTS is being criticized by the industry for this remix tactic, other artists are celebrated and called smart and iconic for doing exactly the same. The industry and multiple fandoms think they are doing something by accusing armies of mass buying BTS albums and songs, without realizing that by doing so, they are admitting that the quote unquote organic hits from the charts are there with industry support and not fandom support. The industry and multiple fandoms criticize and laugh at BTS for not having radio points when they have no control over that. They will have to pay for that just like every other artist is doing. The industry and multiple fandoms criticize and laugh at armies for mass buying Stage. when all they're doing is balance the unfair treatment by the industry. If BTS is not willing to pay for radio, which is illegal, or pay for playlisting in streaming platforms, then armies will buy every copy of BTS music available. BTS depends on their fandom and their fandom only. That's what terrifies the industry. BTS are able to stay on the charts while actually making money from their music. That money goes to the BTS members and their Korean label, while the Western music industry receives nothing. I just want to just use a reference of my own, for my own personal life in my own music career, if you'd say. Mm -hmm. um, we won the festival slot. I won't say what festival it is. Mm -hmm. um, for a very big festival here in Australia. And the way that you won was by entering a vote. You got voted in to then go into a Battle of the Bands competition. Mm -hmm. The Battle of the Bands competition was then decided between it, the way they decided the winners was between judge a set of four judges from the industry mm -hmm. and then the rest was uh the crowd vote and mm -hmm. they kind of t calculated it all together and worked it out some way we lost the judges vote but we won by a mile with the crowd vote mm -hmm. and one of the judges literally said oh it's such a shame like it's so good that you guys got it but yeah we really wanted these other people to win and to me, that just summarize that just sums the industry up in a whole. Yeah, dude. So they they want to pick who wins. They want to pick because they want control over everything. It's nuts, dude. Yeah. And the fact that they even said that to you is like crazy. Yeah, they like they literally said like, "Oh, I didn't think you were gonna win it." Yeah. <laughs> well, we well, did. Tough luck. So yeah, you know. And fast forward six months later, we weren't working with that group and the band that lost to us that they wanted to win, we're working with them. Yeah. Yeah, so, 100%. You know, it is what it is. It's fine. But it is nice to see this sort of thing and just know that at the end of the day, artists as big as BTS go through this still. Yeah. Suppressed, yeah. pushed down, beaten down. Yeah. In every way, shape and form, but they still manage to persevere and overcome. Yeah, for sure, man. In spite of that. Even the distribution deal BTS has with an American label benefits BTS more than it benefits the American label, so the label prioritizes their actual signed artists and dismisses BTS. 
that's what makes the industry mad. That's why the industry has ridiculed them so much that fandoms have convinced themselves that BTS are the corrupt ones instead of being the against all odds winners in a corrupt industry. And this is beyond the industry being petty. Other fandoms are convinced that the general public support is better than fandom support because that is, according to the industry, organic success. But as you can see, there is nothing organic about these tactics. There is nothing organic about an industry choosing its own success stories and sabotaging the ones overcoming their unfair obstacles. What is organic is having a fan base of real people actually mm. buying and streaming the music. You can see these millions of real people in sold out stadium tours, something that the majority of the number one artists and quote unquote million sellers cannot accomplish. The general public may- Just once again, I wanna use a example not of myself but within the, the music scene here in australia or just just in our scene of music globally yeah how many international acts come over here or how many international acts do you hear about you know they've been a band for however long and you see them play like they might if someone might post up their, their concert or a festival and there's no one watching them mm -hmm. and you're like what i thought they were huge and it's like well you can make yourself look huge on the internet. You can yeah. rig the numbers if you're smart enough and you know, have the money. Yeah. But you can't force people that like you if you're not, if you're just not making good music. 100%, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all, a, it's all a show. And most of the artists that have a connection with their fans and can pull massive crowds aren't the ones that are on TV. Like you look at here, the bands that sell out their every date on their tour and you're like wow that's surprising it's like no it's just that they're Cursor. they're real exactly man he, they he, have he real has more fans. streams in this in this country than anyone else yeah yeah but then they try and make it look like he's struggling when he's <laughs> thriving dude yep they may trick into streaming a song. They may follow a music trend on TikTok, but they are not always willing to buy expensive concert tickets. The general public moves on and forgets, but an army of fans is able mm. to make an album or song successful without the artist paying for industry support. Real organic success is when an artist transforms the general public into fans, and that's what BTS does with every release. The fandom's numbers only go up. This is clearly reflected in the percentage of fans who consider themselves only ARMY. The majority of BTS fans are not K-pop fans. The majority of BTS fans are part of the general public. And it is easily understandable when you look at the fandom's waves of new fans and realize that they have nothing to do with K-pop and everything to do with BTS's performance. So why would an artist prefer the momentary passive support from the general public when they could have the constant active support from a fandom? Why would artists prefer a theater or arena concert with people who only know their one or two TikTok hits instead of a sold out stadium with people who know all of their songs? Mm. Why is constantly convincing the general public to be your fan not organic success? I think it's very hypocritical for fandoms to cry about how the charts have no meaning anymore every time BTS gets a number one. Yet they love celebrating the number ones from other artists who got there with weird tactics to say the least. If now anyone can fool the charts and what BTS is doing is so easy, then why aren't more artists getting number ones only with sales? Why are the charts irrelevant only when BTS succeeds in them? And don't get me wrong, the charts are obviously corrupt. The obvious message they try to send every time BTS gets a number one shows how aware they are of their corruption. The obvious humiliation from the industry's actions and media articles show how the industry doesn't care at all about their little mafia getting exposed. They don't care because they know that the general public will keep falling for their tactics. The general public will still believe that a song they don't even like is organically successful because they've listened to it on the radio hundreds exactly of times. The said. general public will still believe that their accidental monthly stream in Spotify doesn't count much. Fandoms will still believe that what's best for their favorite artist is the industry and the general public support, rather than their own fandom buying the music and concert tickets. But every time ARMY helps BTS succeed in the same music industries that sabotage them, they prove a point. And no matter what the industry does, BTS will make money with no American music label in between and not shaking hands with industry people. No matter what the industry does, BTS will continue having the fandom support others fail to conquer.
Sick. That was really cool. I'm really glad that Ami suggested that we watch that. Yeah. Um, and look, as frustrating as a lot of that information in there is, you guys, Ami, you should be stoked that you guys are smart enough and that you have enough ability to discern what is good music and what is not that you don't yep. buy into what the music industry is trying yep. to sell you. You guys have found BTS and you know, really gotten on board with them because of them, not because any media company is telling you that that's what you should listen to. So yep. you guys should be stoked, man. It's really cool. I just can't help but think of this situation as just one big example of tall poppy syndrome. I'm going to use the workplace as an example. But you've got to be careful about saying tall poppy syndrome because tall poppy syndrome is like jealousy and not wanting to be happy. True. This is more evil than tall yeah. poppy syndrome. Yeah. This is, we can't make money out of it. Yeah. So we don't want you guys to succeed. Like yeah. tall poppy is like what your mate who never could start a band yeah, is doing yeah, 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 on the yeah, couch, yeah. sitting there wishing that they could be doing what you're doing. It's yeah. not that, it's evil <laughs> yeah it's literal corruption man yeah yeah exactly it's ridiculous 100 percent. it's corruption and yeah crazy well guys thank you so much for suggesting that we really enjoyed that yeah. and it just yeah. kind of like touched on a lot of things that we already talk about yeah. in our personal life so it's nice to hear it from yeah. the perspective of of bts army yeah for sure thank you so, so much guys keep the suggestions coming peace peace guys